everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the second episode of Cosmic Connections. I'm Rachel Archelaus. This is Harry Croner. Hi. And we're going to talk today about ET communication and all of the different ways that you can, well, some of the different some, ways yeah. that you can communicate with your galactic family or friends. Um, just to start you off, we're going to talk about painting and drawing them. Um, telepathy, dreams. Yeah, through well, through consciousness. And I want to mention that first of all, that, that um, what people think of most is is uh, the no the contact of the, of the third kind, which is like a you know, direct physical contact in this third dimension. And I want to mention that most communication and most connection doesn't happen on this dimension. First of all, and that's really important to to remember that um, expecting to see that that spaceship outside your window. Is going to be a very uh, unique experience, but it's not necessarily the most frequent way you know to communicate with them. Um, so, so we'll start with that, just putting it into perspective, and knowing that um, most of the time when you con connect with them, it will be through um, you raising your vibration and, and allowing yourself to open yourself to communicating on the, the through telepathy, through ideas, through downloads, through information uh, uh, on, on that on the on the conscious level on the consciousness level so it's uh, really important but why don't you tell us a little more Rachel how you communicate them with them through paintings mm. so before I even knew that I had um, an ET connection mm -hmm. I was I paint by pretty much checking out and just channeling I just do whatever my hand wants and all of these faces would show up just to kind of give you an outline. I like to paint on glass and all of these gray faces would show up and they were a little scary. They looked, you know, a little weird because they looked like aliens and painting after painting, they would show up and I didn't yeah. know who they were. I didn't know what they wanted. Um, I definitely felt like there was a presence behind them and that it was, mm. you know, it wasn't just painting a picture of an alien. It was like, they're here. They're trying to tell me something. Yeah. Um, but then over the years, of course, I did realize that these are my family and my friends, and um, I've been able to communicate with them more consciously. In fact, I have a self-portrait of of me as kind of like a like a hybrid being or an, or an ET. Beautiful. And so this is also how they can come out. And again, this was just painted. On the fly, I wasn't intending for that to come out. It just kind of came out and painted that with my fingers. So oh, wow. it just they just kind of show up whenever they need to, or mm -hmm. whenever I need to see something. Like my higher self will guide me into doing that. Yeah, and I, I know that uh, we talked about um, uh, recently about how people reacted to that painting uh, of on, on a on a book cover of Communion mm, from yeah. the Woodley Strivers uh, book Communion. And how it really is uh, st uh, struck a chord in, in many people just to see that image, a very clear image of uh, that was a Zeta, right? Mm -hmm. um, to to uh, the Zeta t t species of, of being, um, and and it's it's really um, almost so many people. I think million. People, it really opened that that consciousness. People are like, whoa, okay, this is causing me some reaction. This is even if you're not. Of aware of it on a conscious, subconscious, and we'll talk a little more about uh, hypnosis in just a moment because that's what I do. Um, but it really strikes chords, and if, it if if looking at that image stroke a chord in in, in your uh, uh, consciousness, even it's just like you're like, wow, I need to stare at this for a while now at that face. Um, that is is a, is a it's, it's, it symbolizes that you have some connection with them on some level, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I have, I have another friend of mine, and she paints, paints um, different types of, of aliens, and maybe I, I can share some of her uh, pictures. And, and she really goes into because she can very visual as well, and she can see the different types, more of the ant people and more of uh, uh, the, um, the um, feline people, and she does, does a pretty uh, uh, um, good representation of, of how they look, at least I, I think so. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting to see the visual part of how they can connect and show themselves to us in order to to um, to start. Usually, it's it's also a beginning of communication. It's, it's shown us like, let me show you who I am, and and as if someone's standing at the door and saying, "Hello, I am uh, here to to uh, to communicate with you, to speak with you, to to develop a relationship with you." So I think it's 
It's uh, it's an it, people need to perceive it as an invitation, not as something like, oh my God, they're around me. Because uh, uh, let's be honest, they're always around us. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's definitely a given uh, at this point, especially at this point, because we know there's like hundreds of millions of them around the earth now, assisting in this process of ascension. So uh, allow your visual cortex and allow your subconscious to allow more and more of this to come out. Now, um, I can say about, uh, let me talk a little bit about how I, I, uh, I think I mentioned that a little bit of la last one of how I, I started c connecting with them. It was more through uh, my clients. So I, I've done some, uh, I do the therapy and did some past life. And, and through that, I had uh, clients connect with, uh, with beings. I was like, well, may, may I speak to those beings? And they simply, the, my clients would start channeling them. And that was fascinating to start having a, just a real conversation with those beings, um, which it was very obvious are talking at a whole different level of consciousness and a whole different level of, of perspective on humanity. And, and um, it, was, it was beautiful to see uh, that so many of them, at that point, I, I really was uh, inf heavily influenced by the fact that a lot of them are not, uh, that I were here to just abduct us and all that kind of stuff. So it was beautiful to see that the majority of them are here to help us and, and help us move forward in our progression as, as, a, as a species and develop us uh, uh, further on. So, um, are you knocking the Zetas? Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, no, it, it's, it's, um, no, well, it was, it was a fear based, um, and, and if you read Dolores Cannon, like, like I, I do her work, the quantum healing work of Dolores Cannon. You can see that a lot of people who are even interviewed by like John Mack, who was a big thing about the abductions, he, she, she actually went and did sessions on the same individuals with, that were in his books. They only showed like this immense fear. And she was able through her, her skill and, and intuition to know that they can move beyond it and move beyond those images or beyond, beyond those. Sometimes it's even masks, uh, visual masks that they put on so you won't see the whole thing in truth. And go beyond that and see that actually you go on those ships and you get educated and you get... Uh, you learn things and you meet your, your galactic family and, and you get to do so much more and actually do some work um, on the ships on, uh, uh, while you generally sleep here on Earth. So it's it's uh, exploring and seeing, the, oh, that was just a, a, like, not a facade, but it was like the first impression. And unfortunately, people that, like gave up to that fear um, and, uh, and, and the shock of the fear of like suddenly encountering uh, other beings. And then once you go beyond, it's like, okay, wow, this actually was a very uh, fruitful and, and interesting and still ongoing relationship that was, um, uh, uh, it's not that way. So when I would start exploring that and I start seeing and communicating, my first communication was with the Arcturians, for example, um, and it was interesting to see uh, how they are. Uh, they needed to have even the, the people they were speaking through, which usually were very spiritual people to begin with, they were able to communicate with them. But to move them into a whole different level of um, vibration, because they they are communicating from from such higher dimensions, from you know, seven, eight, ninth, and beyond dimension. So for them to come down and communicate with us here on on the third, fourth, or fifth dimension, wherever we are, and when we are hypnosis, they they, would, they had to have kind of a a middle place in which we can uh, converse. And it was really fascinating because one of my clients, I remember that when they were like doing it, like all on where. We are raising the vibration of this this individual that we're communicating through, and she was literally oscillating. You know, it seemed like you know, mm. on on him. I was like, is it because of the low lighting? Am I just seeing mm -hmm. it? But no, she was really, literally, kind of becoming slightly translucent, and it was it was amazing. She was really getting to a, a much higher dimension, and that was that was beautiful to see. And and at that point, I started to obviously get to those people who were able to do it, and we started to get more and more information and. And it was just fascinating. And I realized that so many of our ancient cultures, because in that case, we, we were getting through the Mayan uh, priests. And then I did other um, uh, people who were doing it, again, through past lives. We're going into from Egyptian lives and through Atlantis. And, and realized that so much of the major uh, cultures in our history have already been communicating and doing that, so it was fascinating through again through the process of hypnosis to allow people to open up and see that they had those connections, and m most of them didn't know, or uh, it was just fascinating to uh, uh, to know it. And uh, so this is how I was introduced to it, and the more for me, on a more of a, as a, as a, 
as a healer, as as a, the, kind of a therapist for it, um, and, and 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 then slowly realized as I was as they were talking about the, uh, the individual themselves, and we're asking them to do some healing and do all this kind of work, and realized that like, you two are part of us, you two are part of our family, and I'm like what really? So for me, it was more of a this kind of gentle introduction to it, which was kind of interesting, which is good because usually uh, that's the best way for, to approach me, I guess. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so they did it in a very good way for, for me, is to, to recognize my, my portion of it. Because until then, I was like, I'm just a special human, as far as like my, my interests and my uh, uh, wish to find out about past lives and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it was uh, um, an interesting process in, in receiving this information and, and also seeing that they have different different types of different, again, again the Acturians, it was the Pleiades uh, who are, are speaking, and you can see the different um, tone of voice, a different uh, approach, a different attitude they have towards things. Um, and that opened that door, that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, um, after war, afterwards, uh, I started realizing that, and as I was asking, so how can I communicate with you otherwise? I would just, again, I was having this conversation with, uh, through my clients, um, how, can, how can we uh, continue this communication uh, for the person themselves to communicate with their galactic family and for me to develop this relationship? Because I realized I need to, I want to explore this further. And they were just like, yeah, you just need to sit down and, 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 and meditate or, or you know, get to a, a, a light trans state at that point and start uh, just conversing with us. We'll be there. And for me, it was not, again, not, I'm not so visual in that aspect, but for some reason I have very easy time um, Opening that telepathic communication uh, and, and level of, of uh, uh, talking to them consciously in that way and, and through, through consciousness and and that's and that and then I started really working on that and developing that skill, um, which took me a little while to get to to own it again. It's like fine tuning a, ra a radio to really hear the right channel, um, and I was able to start talking to. At that point, I was developing the, the ability to talk to my guides, uh, to my higher self, and to those other beings that are, uh, have, I realized have been helping me. Another interesting thing that, that, that when I had some clients who are more visually um, open, they can see more with, with their third eye, can see a little more of those beings, especially when they're in, in a trance state, which are in just a more elevated um, level of, of frequency and, and openness in their consciousness. Um, they're able to see them. In the room, it's like it's like okay, now just allow yourself to you know, feel energies and whatever it is what we're doing. Uh, they're just like, oh wow, I see there's a few beings in the room, and I see them, and I see like no tall beings, or I see small beings, or I see like blue beings, and they're starting to realize that there's very different types that work with me, and and because there was again, I'm talking about like now, no dozens and dozens of cases in which they start showing that like there's a few of them that were continuously showing up. Um, so I knew like, okay, so those are probably people that work with me and I can start trying to, and again, through them, I was trying to develop, okay, let me talk to you guys and I start developing some, some relationship with them, you know, on, on, on the consciousness telepathic level. Um, and then there's some, some beings that came with the person and realized to have that relationship that we are, uh, there's so much to the unseen that we think of just, uh, we think of just, uh, uh guides and angels, but there's all those other uh, light beings that are just here to, to help us, and, and they're surrounding those people, and of course there's, there's a reason that people are drawn to come to me, but um, it is interesting to see those interactions, and what I like to do to, to mention too is, is the, the, the beauty in their, their work in very, various species working together, and I think that's important to remember, this is not some isolated event or, or isolated cases. It's really um, a process of many different beings working at the same time. And for me, like at this point, again, they change, they move on, some of them, it's, it's their job uh, to come and work with us. Mm -hmm. um, and this was me and, and helping people to, uh, to do what they need to uh, experience. And it was kind of interesting, at some point I asked them, so where are you specifically from? And they're like, it's like, it really doesn't matter. It's like the same as you guys, you know, you move countries, you move places, so wherever you're from, it doesn't really matter. Where you are is where you are at that point. Yeah, they're still an incarnation too. It's That's not right. like we're just the ones incarnating and they're like always Pleiadians. They're the That's same right. as us. Right, right. 
Not to mention that we are blended beings too. Like, That's right. I'm not actually Rachel. I'm like a blend of all the energies that I'm just channeling. So, you know, I'm from lots of places. <laughs> yeah, Vedi and Zeta and, and, and many more. And when I ask myself, so where's my original planet? It's like, it's like, well, there were so many. Why Why even focus on the one mm -hmm. that you started in? It's, it's almost irrelevant. Yeah. Um, it's like if you think about going through a journey uh, of like traveling the world, it doesn't matter which country you started in. It, you, the experience is going through all of them and, and, and going through everything as you travel the world. It's not the old experiences you gather along the way, not necessarily which one's the first. It's it's almost just like insignificant if you think about um, the, the numerous civilizations that each of us have actually been to. So it's like just, it just doesn't matter. It's just, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever you. you're naturally drawn to is just perfect. Like the beginning I listened to... Um, a lot of Pleiadian channelers, and I was like, oh, well, you know, this is perfect for me right now. And then I mm -hmm. listened to Bashar, who's Gesasani, or, mm -hmm. um, and then I heard some Yael the other day, and, um, you know, Zeta, which is harder to find, but there's some books out there, and... and Syrian. Yeah, well, that's not, like, I've never read anything or really mm -hmm. listened to anyone channeling Syrian, so... Mm -hmm. That's fine for me, but you know, whatever you listen to yeah. or drawn to is fine, and you'll get exactly whatever you what find. You yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it, exactly, it's okay to, to listen to different sources because it, it is um, there's a lot of it is just commonality in the message, and it's important to find the commonality in the message. Um, but allow yourself to to feel that the the again the various channels. Mm -hmm. um, to open it, and, and again, it, 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 they like to go to whatever you are more open or inclined to as, as, a, as, a, as a person and as, as a being. Um, so for Rachel, it's, it's a lot of it, it's in many different channels. For, for and, and again, the, the, the more advanced you become, the more and more of those channels that open up. Mm -hmm. um, but if you was, was starting with, with visual art, because that's your, your go-to thing, uh, when you allow your intuition to go fir first, um, so that was the, the door for you, and for me, it was more of a conversation and and going through the, the telepathic communication. Uh, yeah, so. and if you are a visual person, but you don't just know what things mean, you know, intuitively um, or telepathically, I do teach people how to communicate with their galactic families through intuitive art, mm -hmm. and there's a free class at intuitiveartacademy.com. And that's where you get to have that back and forth two-way conversation um, through color and your own color meaning. So um, the thing with that is, though, I teach that in my certification, and I teach people all different sources of, like, talk to your guides and your angels, your higher self. And the, the galactic family one, people are often like, well, I need a little bit more time for this to sink in. Because it's often of a higher vibration than you're used to. And so it can be a little bit foggy. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need to raise your vibration kind of either way. If you're not already there, you probably are if you're listening to this. You're probably yeah. already at the level where you could understand it. Um, it's easier than you think. Yeah. Um, once you start, just like us. <laughs> yeah. Once you start tapping into it, 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 it really is, uh, is it? It's just my imagination. Am I just creating that conversation in my head? And, it, and for me, it was more uh, opening the automatic writing kind of channel. Not really. I, I, I'm some. I'm, I'm mostly conscious of what's happening. I'm just having a, this conversation with my head, but I notice a different tone. I notice that it's more of um, sometimes it's very clear female voice or, or male voice, but most of it's androgynous. But um, uh, when I, when I in, in different species and different places and, and, and different uh, 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 focus on what they say and, and, and depending on, on the questions, so. It, it's just, and it feels, again, at the beginning, you feel like it's, oh, it's just me making it up, the conversation. But then you go back and read it, like, oh, my God, this is like pure. And you, you see that level of, of writing that comes through is so much purer, so much cleaner um, than you would write on your on yourself, by on, on your own. Um, so it, it allow that. So it shows you that there's a little different tone in there, the different um, aspects that they bring forth and... And, and it's really just developing that relationship with them mm -hmm. um, and allow the communication to get stronger and stronger until it becomes, uh, if you can do it on a daily basis, at least in the beginning, to get that going. And then you realize you need less and less of getting into it, you know, 
deep trance, you just allow yourself, first of all, your vibration just rises anyway, naturally, um, as you just mentioned. Uh, and then it's just be, being a conversation. You close your eyes and just have a conversation. Um, so it, it, it really is a, a beautiful thing to have. Because it, it really, I think, opens up that knowing that, first of all, we are supported. We're not alone in this process of ascension. We're not being uh, thrown into a tumultuous uh, experience um, that is, is like, what's happening. There's a lot of direction, a lot of focus, a lot of in, intention, and um, <clears throat> it's being directed in, in, the, in a way that is in our humanity's highest good, and it's important to know that, that, that it's, it's not, um, we're not the blind leading the blind here. There's, there's actually, there's, there's clarity that there's, uh, um, this, it's, it's been in the works for many, many years, and, and there's, we have so much help from so many different species around the earth, um, that are benevolent and are here to support us. So, <clears throat> your, your your chance of meeting someone who is like actually, I think it's pretty clear that in the past few uh, years, um, any kind of malevolent experience with what again what they call the reptilians. So much of the reptilians have uh, there's so much good reptilians if if they're mentioned mm -hmm. and 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 I was able to communicate and, and uh, realize that one of my biggest helpers is a reptilian. Um, and then she's an amazing healer and she's helps me in, in, in uh, when I'm in sessions with clients and it's just um, good to know that a lot of what we have again been exposed to years ago uh, it's not necessarily the case and it's not necessarily um, the, the impression that they want to have of them and they really are, are, are working now diligently through people who can um, speak for them, like us and like others, that channel uh, that they're here for our help, they're here to help us, they're here to, to um, move us forward, and really develop a, a, a loving relationship with us, because it is very loving. Yeah, that's a good point for me to finish my story from last time about how I had direct contact. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, so if you didn't listen, I was 17, I didn't know I had any kind of ET connection whatsoever with anything. I was, um, it was late at night, it was like 2 a.m. and I was writing a letter to my friend on the couch in my dad's house. And all of a sudden these five Zeta beings appeared on the other side of the room. And um, it was the most terrifying thing that ever happened to me. And they were hovering about a foot off the floor and they were only very slightly transparent. Like, they were pretty embodied. They were pretty dense. Mm -hmm. And the I thought that some of them had landed separately in the kitchen because it sounded like they were shaking the toaster and, like, hitting all the pots and pans. And it was, like, metal shaking around. And I couldn't move. I couldn't hear them. I couldn't feel them. And so... I couldn't, you know, I'm pretty empathic and telepathic, and if they were trying to say something to me, I couldn't hear it. And I just thought they were just looking at me, like, and not, I couldn't feel them, you know, it was really weird. And so, it lasted maybe for a minute or two, it's hard to tell in that, in that state when everything's kind of happening really slowly. Um, but I, years later, you know, 10 years later, I no, more than that, 13 years later, I found out that they had come to try to let me know that, like, everything was going to be okay because I was um, feeling really depressed the, the past few years because of all the trauma I'd been through. And so that was, of course, ET communication, even though I couldn't get a message in the moment. It was all subconscious mm -hmm. at that level, but... You know, they were trying to tell me that they loved me and that they were my family and that everything was going to be okay. But the amount of fear that that created was unbelievable. And even though I'd been psychic my whole life and I dealt with so much stuff and um, my life was kind of like, you know, a, a horror movie for a couple of years, I still thought that, that was crazy. And I didn't tell anybody about it for a really long time because it was so... Shocking. I didn't even really, I had never really even considered if aliens were real before then. I never really thought about it. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad to know 
that their message was that and that they were loving, but it took me a really long time to, to, to really work through that fear. So even if, you know, even if you had a direct contact experience, it probably wouldn't be what you're expecting at this level because there's so much to work through first. Um, but now when I, when they're around and they don't come around as dense as they used to, Mm -hmm. um, but now it's cool, but it, it took a really long time to get there, even though I knew intellectually that everything was okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, that initial shock. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to go through. And, 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 and again, for me, it was more of a gentle process. It didn't, they weren't standing in front of me. Um, but it was, it was that deeper knowing that, wow, they're, they're here. They're, they have access to everything. They can just talk to me and, and um, you know, they're they're unseen, and so it was a, definitely a, a process of, of um, understanding and appreciating that it it, it is here, it is existing, and and luckily I've read a lot about it uh, prior to to uh, you could say direct contact through through the channeling of my clients of, of those beings. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's a process. So if, if, if you're new to it, if, if you're feeling like, wow, this is, this is too much, that's okay. Allow, the, the, allow this conversation to help you open up and understand that this is okay. Yeah. That it's, it's, um, it's a part of your uh, own growth and process to just, even just for now, just acknowledge uh, their existence and the fact that they're here to help. And uh, um, if you choose to, and again, for me, it was a conscious choice. Like, okay, I want to develop this relationship. I want to see if I can speak with them. It's just out of, for me, curiosity. Um, it was an, at least the like, way I felt in the beginning. I, I was drawn to it. So I, I really want to communicate with them. Um, <clears throat> so allow, allow this to, to, to lead you in a gentle way. Don't feel like to do, that if you're going to start doing this, you're gonna, it's going to slam in your face. It, it, so just to take, take away all that fear of it because it is, um, we are, it, it is done under a, a very, um, clear protocol and, and protection of people so yeah a, you're not gonna experience anything that you can't handle yeah um, which is important and you'll think maybe sometimes that you can't handle things um, but you know your higher self is orchestrating this entire thing so <clears throat> it's right. all good one thing that really helped me process the fear to bring up the fear so that I could process it was um, Dolores Cannon's book Keepers of the Garden Oh yes, that was that's a really beautiful book, and it kind of outlines one version of how humans were created and um, how the ETs really helped us um, evolve and everything. It's really beautiful. And the other thing we didn't mention is dreams, right? Well, that's so right, yes. they can communicate with us, and we can actually <clears throat> start to recall memories of what happened to us as kids, or when we were on ships, or in past lives through our dreams. Mm -hmm. Right, I mentioned last time about the dream that I was like 14 and I really remember it very clearly because of um, that I saw a ship, a humongous ship the size of a city above above, above my head and I realized, wow, this is, this is amazing. And I, I, I remember it so so vividly and I realized that this was not a dream. This was too too vivid, too, and I remember it till now. It's been 30 years um, that I remember it so clearly and so uh, uh, um, it impressed me so, so uh so strongly and there's other obviously uh communications with that uh, again and they can and, and dreams are our subconscious is a beautiful thing and they can come to us not necessarily in the form of of uh of uh their own form you could say some of them are formless and you gotta remember that too a lot of them are formless in, in such high dimensions that they really are just a, a, a ball of energy of consciousness so allow yourself to know that this is also what they are. So they may come to you in different guises that, that will um, help you feel a little better about it. It'll help you. Can, so it might common just, thing is birds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like the the avian nation kind of thing. All of them. Like yeah. I've had um, other people than that like show up as um, what was it a turkey vulture mm -hmm. um, landed right in front of my car. And, you know, and then, what, an hour later, something like that, <laughs> I'm back. And um, I was apparently having a conversation. But lots of different birds have heard owls. I think that's a common yes, one. Yes, an owl. An mm -hmm. owl is a common one in, in the um, 
Yes, so, so they, they come in different forms and allows you to know that this is, again, um, just another opening for you to accept things or be able to work with them more easily. Um, so it's, it's all, be open to all possibilities and be open to all uh, channels of, of communication that they're trying to uh, have with you. Um, so it's, it's um, keep an open mind and, and, and don't let the fear or, or uh, um, just clear rejection of like, oh, that doesn't make any sense or it doesn't uh, mean anything to me or um, just just let, let things be and, and more will open up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because if you're experiencing fear, then you're helping to clear that for the masses. So it's not a bad thing to, to have that fear. It doesn't even mean that it's attached to you. It just means that that's been placed in your experience for you to help everybody out. You know, I feel like that's why I had so much fear because I'm helping. Um, Harry was saying before how we're all ambassadors here. Like, if you're listening to this, you're probably one too. Um, mm -hmm. And we're helping bring this concept of, you know, our galactic family, um, every, you know, all the fact that we're just not alone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're becoming a little bit more like Star Trek people yeah, you know like exactly. where we're gonna have these friends and the saying it'll be no big deal they look different whatever um but we've got a ways to go before we get there and if we don't help clear the fear can you imagine if just like a ship landed and like aliens got out and there were you know they started kind of walking up to mayors all over the place and we're like hey we're gonna you know help you through this transition that would be pandemonium and we don't want that. We don't want like a, you know, one of those movies about yeah. that happening. So um, we've got we've got to clear some things up first. And if you're part of this conversation, then you're helping to do that. And, and it's exactly it. they they know that actually going to the government actually they tried before and, and failed with it um, to to come to the to humanity's consciousness. Through that will only cause uh, misinterpretation, fear, and and, uh, and 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 confusion, and it's not what they want. And they know it, and they don't want to create that. So they're coming through people, and they're coming through and making the connection with individuals. So um, a besides, lot of, why would they go to like the you know right. the created hierarchy? Like they That's don't right. care about it's, that. It's not about that exactly. It's not about that. It's about raising humanity's consciousness, not necessarily through uh, institutions. It's not uh, the most direct route. The most direct route is to reach each and every one of us. And that is a better way, especially those who are more primed and more ready and, and have received this. this uh, we all have really received this, this mission before we came here, whether we are aware of it or not. So so allow yourself to, to uh, do your share and allow yourself to open yourself up. And again, the, level, the, the way of the channel's communication, especially in the beginning, allow it to be whatever it is. Um, if it's through visual, um, through direct telepathy, uh, psychic abilities, um, or for me, like it was like through uh, automatic writing, it was the most uh, easiest for me to have full uh, uh, communication. So there's so many different ways. Don't don't lock yourself up into oh well, oh well I'm not that visual. It doesn't matter. You can do other things. You can you can open yourself in different ways and allow this um, to come to you. And again, a lot of dreams. Um, so, so there's so many ways. So many. So keep yourself open. Keep yourself um, available if you choose to to uh, to uh, be a part of this journey. Yep. And don't judge it. Yeah. Don't judge it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Allow it to be. It's all good. Very good. Yeah. So, um, if you would like to have a session with Harry yeah. and connect with your family or whatever comes up for you in a session because obviously you can't force anything um though quantum healing hypnosis is kind of known for accessing those higher dimensional Absolutely. selves i i had an amazing experience with quantum healing hypnosis where i was actually able to go back and see some of my zeta lives see what i did there um see what see and feel which is really cool the family structure and how you felt about loved ones because it's a very different family structure it's not like you love your spouse and everything no it's kind of like orchestrated like you're just put together with someone you you're given a child it's not even really yours it's like 
because they're kind of grown and all mixed up. It's very cool. Um, and I got to see what job I did there, and then I got to go to um, a place that I lived or live currently kind of um, in the Pleiades, and I was like this beautiful little magenta blob of energy, and it was amazing, and I cried because it felt so familiar, and I had an amazing experience. Um, so Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people come in and have an experience uh, living life through civilizations and other planets. And it just um, it just goes to show you. It's just like it's not our souls are have already been and done that. We are just need to remember it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And um, if you want to learn how to do the intuitive art, just go to intuitiveartacademy.com, and you can learn it for free. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, see you next time. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week on Cosmic Connections, where we'll talk about another interesting subject of yeah. connecting with your ET heritage. Excellent. All right. Bye-bye.